Hi guys, it's Katie here. So today I thought that I would do a first impressions on this guy right here. This is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector and it comes in a nice little jar like this. It is teeny tiny. It's only 4.5 grams and the packaging is, is nice. You twist off the lid and you get your product in there. Uh, it is $29. You can get it at Ulta or you can get it at Sephora or of course Becca Cosmetics Online. So I found out about this product because of Makeup by Cheryl. She found out about this product because of somebody called named Natalie Halcrow. I don't know who that is because I don't watch a show called Wags, which apparently she's on. Um, but I looked up this girl after I watched Makeup by Cheryl. Oh my god, this girl is beautiful. I mean... She is gorgeous. So uh, apparently she uses this product on her under eye area and this girl's under eye area looks like she just woke up from a hundred year nap. Like not even kidding. Her makeup looks fantastic. So she started using it. Makeup by Cheryl got it from her. Now I'm getting it from Makeup by Cheryl. So I thought that I would get it and give it my first impressions little review for you guys and let you know my thoughts on this product. So if you've been interested in this little guy right here, then just keep watching. So basically this is just supposed to be amazing at brightening the under eye. It's basically, it's supposed to be used in conjunction with a concealer in order to brighten that area. Now Becca says that it has um, like light reflecting properties in here in order to obviously reflect light underneath the eyes and then make that area appear brighter. Okay, so here I have the product right here and what am I gonna go in with? I am going to go in with my Marc Jacobs The Conceal Brush. This is a really nice brush. I like this. So I'm just going to take... I've heard that you should apply a very thin layer. I saw a video that Makeup by Cheryl did where she used this as well. She recommended using a very small, thin amount. So I'm just going to put this... Just a very thin layer in kind of like a... Uh, triangle shape underneath my eye area. I'm not so much dragging the product as much as I am just like pushing it into my under eye area. So I guess I should do like one side with it and then one side without it and see if we can tell that much of a difference. It feels pretty tacky. Uh, and so far under my eye area, I mean, I must have like wrinkles galore in comparison to Natalie Halcrow because so far this looks kind of cakey underneath my eyes, but we'll see. I'm just going to kind of blend out these areas right in here too. As you can see, it definitely does look a lot brighter on this side than it does on this side. Um, so far, I have a feeling that this is going to be something that looks great on camera, but a little bit over the top in real life, but we shall see. So now I'm gonna go in with a concealer. I'm just gonna use a concealer that I always use, which is MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I just gotta find it, here it is. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna use like less is more kind of thing to avoid getting too cakey underneath that area. Okay, now what I do notice so far is that it's the concealer is gliding really easily over that product. So it's definitely nice to kind of give your under eye area like a nice slick feeling under there before you apply the concealer. I feel like my concealer is blending out super easy because of that brightening concealer. I don't know. Can you guys tell like a huge difference? I don't know so far. Okay, so this area has been completely blended out. I have concealer and the Becca product on this side. I have absolutely nothing on the under eye area on this side. Keep in mind that I don't have particularly dark under eye circles. However, 
I mean, it is much brighter, but I don't see a huge difference yet. What I am going to go in with now is my under eye setting powder. And the one that I've been using recently is this Hour Hourglass. <laughs> And the one that I've been using recently is this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. Uh, this one is definitely, it has light reflecting properties. I'm just going in with this tapered brush by Sigma. And I'm just taking a little bit of that and pushing it into my under eye area. Just to set that and make sure it doesn't crease. I find that the more products that you put under your eye, the more chance of creasing you have. So because I put in that extra product there, I want to make sure that I set it really, really well. Okay, now with that, it does look much, much brighter, but keep in mind that this is a very nice light reflecting powder. I'm going to go in with my contour and bronzer and blush and highlight a little bit on this side only and we'll see if I can see a big difference. I'm going to go in with my Kat Von D shade light palette. I'm going to go in with this color right here as my contour and I'm only going to do it on this side. Actually maybe I should do the contour on both sides but just not do anything on the under eye area. We'll do that. Okay, so I just went in with my contour and then a little bit of just using this brush with no product on it just to kind of blend it out a little bit. And I'll do the same thing on the other side now. Now, all I'm going to put on this side over here is concealer. So this is what I would usually do. I'm just taking a little bit of the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer and doing what I always do, just a little bit of a V. And keep that extra. Now I have the Becca stuff and the concealer and a contour on this side. I just have concealer on this side. So, sorry, I'm out of breath from running down the stairs to get the FedEx guy, so isn't that sad? Okay, so I'm just going in with a little bit of contour here, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna go in and set it too with that same Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. I always use this for my under eye area. I just think it's the best. It's got that light reflecting property that we want and really brightens the under eye area. It's just what I always use, so it's easy for me to compare to see if that Becca product is really doing anything. Okay. Huh. Now that I have both things on, I kind of see the difference with that Becca stuff. Now, keep in mind that there is a large difference between what looks good on camera and what looks good in real life. So if you film or you take pictures of your makeup on Instagram or anything like that, you know what I mean. Sometimes, you know, there's things that look great when you take a photo of it or when it's on film, but then in real life, you're like, I would never step foot outside like this. <laughs> At least I wouldn't with some stuff. So I feel like this is kind of one of those things. I have a very dry under eye area, and so I feel like the Becca product is really emphasizing those under eye lines, and you may not be able to see it on film, but in my mirror in real life, I can see it. Let me put on some under eye mascara real quick on my lower lash line and then I'll bring you in closer so you can see. Okay, now my under eye, my lower lash line mascara is kind of a mess right now. I just threw it on in like five seconds, but um, I don't know if you can actually see how this one is much, much brighter and it looks fantastic, but in real life, you can definitely see my underlying creasing right here. And I don't think it's the product really necessarily creasing. I think it's just because I have fine lines under me, underneath my eye that it's just kind of emphasizing that because there's a lot of product there. Now, that's not to say that it's not on this side. I think that this side definitely looks brighter and it looks great on camera, but it doesn't really suit itself for everyday wear. Whereas this, 
I can still see fine lines underneath my eye area here. It's not quite as bright, but it doesn't look quite as cakey in a way um, for everyday kind of wear. Okay, so all in all guys, I think that this is a fantastic product if you film or you take photos for Instagram or a blog or anything like that because I do think that this side looks brighter and it looks like I've had more sleep than this side. However, you can definitely tell that I'm wearing more product on this eye than this one. So for everyday type wear, I don't think that this is 100% necessary. And in fact, I would totally pass on everyday wear. But when I'm filming, I do think that it looks fantastic. All in all, do I think it's worth it? If you film or take makeup photos, yes. If you don't, no. I do have to say that right now, my under eye area on this side looks, looks pretty good. Just saying. So those are my thoughts on this product right here. And again, this is just a first impression, but I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I will see you guys next time. Bye.